keys are quite quiet because we didn't talk about who's up to <laughs> Fred's statement. Um, however, I'm coming from a company um, developing HMI software and uh, we are more in the, in the station controller area. So <coughs> even for us, Goose is not the standard which we are confronted with. However, there are some solutions with Goose in the station controller, but uh, I will show them at the end. So what I have uh, prepared for you is the following. When we talk about the HMI in a substation or about substation control, um, we should understand which data we need when we do such a solution. And then, as I said already, we are the MMS client or from the client server protocol of 61850, the client side in, in the station computer. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, some viewpoints from an HMI vendor regarding engineering. We, we heard a lot yesterday about engineering in 61850, but uh, we will see it from the angle of an HMI. Third point is a little bit of theory about uh, what is it with these control possibilities uh, in 61850, because I understood that we should do a tutorial, and I think control is quite unique um, in the 61850 world, uh, mainly in the MMS client server communication available. And at the end, some solution examples. Let's go into the data. And I thought I should be keen and use this really beautiful drawing from a company well known on the world market and it shows it so nice that the entire world of 6150 starting with the with the main process on the on the left side uh, connected to the process the process bus the cabinets connected to this process bus the hard wires if they are still available in the cabinets, what do we find there? We find the IDs there, protection relays and so on. And then we have the station bus, and we learned yesterday we cannot really divide both station bus and, and process bus. Somehow they are almost the same. And then we are here in the control room of the substation, and if we have uh, the lucky situation that this control room is manned, it would maybe look like this. And then we have the interfaces uh, via the wide area network to the control center. And we are here in this area to make that clear. So from our point of view, our interface, uh, we are interfacing to these cabinets or and also maybe to the wide area. With a more simple structure, you see that again, so the redundant, maybe redundant servers, HMI servers, connected to the HMI client where I can do the monitoring and my control. Um, maybe we have an RTU with the engineering station <coughs> and we have this station bus here. When we talk about IEDs, I would like to sum up which IEDs we typically face. So we have the bay controllers. So they are controlling uh, the circuit breakers, uh, the disconnectors, they are measuring, maybe they have some uh, protection functionality integrated. And speaking about protection, we have the protection relays as IEDs. We have also the remote terminal units or gateways as IEDs. And we learned also today that we have, we also consider the switches as IEDs and they are now also able to speak 6150, not only SNMP even programmable logical controllers, PLCs, are IEDs and some of them already speak 61850. Merging units, of course, phaser measurement units. And um, yesterday we were talking about routable moves from IEC 61850-90-5. 
this uh, dash 90 dash 5 standard also describes routed sample values and they can be used for phaser measurement units, for instance. Also, our home of our software, the HMI server, is considered as an ID. And you can also make a Raspberry Pi into an ID, uh, which we did. And uh, we can show you that in the workshop in the afternoon, <coughs> where we have uh, put 6150 server and use capability on the Raspberry Pi connected to the network. And then there can be, of course, smart meters, maybe also PV inverters as IDs. But we are talking about HMI, we are talking about station control. What are the most important devices here? It's these. So we are connected to bay controllers, protection uh, units, and we monitor the switches. By the way, also monitoring the switches can be seen in the workshop. So when we talk about the data, we now know the source of the data, the origin of the data for our HMI, but which data is relevant for our HMI? What exactly what, what do we want to see? This depends on the application we want to do with our HMI in the substation. There are a few applications, I mentioned a few here, like, of course, monitoring uh, the switch status, record measured values, we want to get announcement of alarms in our HMI, maybe we want to record the events, not maybe, for sure we want to record that, because this is the protocol actually, this is the, this is the record for if something went wrong. We want to monitor primary and secondary equipment. Maybe we want to produce reports, meter reports. So we see this is more gaining data out of the field for these applications. When we say writing into the field, we want to control the switch gear. Maybe we want to change the, the tap position of our tap changer, or we just want to switch parameters in our protection relay. To give a little bit of a visual impression about that, so this can be an HMI uh, screen for with the single line diagram where we see the status of the switches, or the tap position of a transformer, <coughs> or the logic of a hydropower plant, or the announcement of alarms in an alarm list in this case. A trend, or another trend, about whatever the frequency, the voltage is, the currents. Maybe we want to see um, how a swap of a bus bar should work with a command sequencer here. Or our infrastructure of our network, so our networking infrastructure to monitor that. Or maybe we use it as a first glimpse on a disturbance record on a contrary file. The event list could look like this, or we have reports, or we have even mobile information on our devices about maintenance tasks should, which should be done in a few weeks or days on our mobile device, about the switch gear, maybe. So, digging into 61 and 50, I, I wrote some some object references here to all these <coughs> applications. So monitoring a switch status normally deals with the so-called POS object, so we can do that very easily. Recording measured values uh, with face-to-face uh, -face voltage, for instance, we can do that here. Even alarms can be shown in a standardized um, object reference, or yeah, events can be of any type, of course, but uh, I wanted to mention also the GGIO. So in 61 and 50, if we do not find the, the right logical node, we still can use the GGIO, like you know, the generic input-output, as we know it from a PLC, maybe. Uh, for monitoring the equipment or for maintenance information, maybe an operation counter is important and interesting but also for the secondary equipment, maybe for a switch. 
The number of power-ups is interesting for us. Meter reports, we get the tot total um, uh, apparent power, or the uh, total apparent energy here. And for the control area, we have the upper object, or we switch setting groups by writing uh, on the right object reference or attribute. Okay, so now we know about where the data comes from and which data we need. But how to do the engineering of such a client? <coughs> Again, we have this single line, or not the single line, this, this uh, architecture. And um, who or which devices do we understand as IEC 61 and 50 clients? It's of course, these parts, although the HMI server is called a server, but uh, in terms of 6250, it's a client. And uh, we get the data from the 6250 servers, and we write the data from the client towards the servers. And uh, I would like to make it a short excursion uh, to this AXI abstract communication service interface which is actually described in part 7-2, which we also heard yesterday, um, because this describes all the services uh, which uh, they, I say they, wanted to have in 61 and 50 when they started with, uh, with uh, the development of this great standard. Um, and, and it's almost listed up everything, of, uh, maybe something is missing, but uh, you, see, you see all the services like uh, two different communication concepts. We have client server, we have publisher subscriber. Uh, we have information configuration, so uh, like uh, read and write data, we want uh, to create and delete data sets uh, dynamically, for instance. Uh, we have these parameter groups, so the setting groups thing for, for the protection relays. Uh, the spontaneous data transfer, which we call the reports, unbuffered and buffered reports. The difference can be shown on the, in the workshop. Um, event log, event transfer, which means actually the goose, the sampled values, which means actually the sampled values, uh, the control part, so to control switch gear, for instance, time synchronization, file transfer. Which of these services are important for an HMI 61 and 50 client? So for the left side, of course, it's the client server part, but I would say, so when we made um, the experience that all of these services are important and is interesting to be supported by a 6150 client for an HMI system. But also on the uh, right side, control, yes, time activating operation, actually we as a vendor didn't find any customer who who needed that, who required that. Of course, time synchronization and <coughs> file transfer, mainly we want to read the files, the disturbance records out of the uh, bay control, uh, sorry, of, out of the protection relays, um, but we would not write towards them, but we want to delete the files because uh, they have limited memory there. Okay, and then let's go further into the engineering part. This drawing shows all the services, or almost all services, which are available in 61 and 50. So we have the SCL part for the configuration, we have the time uh, synchronization part, we have the goose part, we have the sample values part here. So when we put everything away, which is important for the HMI, uh, actually we come to that. So we have this situation, we saw that yesterday. So we have a system configuration tool typically, a device configuration tool, we have our HMI which we want to configure and by the way also the IEDs, which is mainly the priority for uh, such projects of course. And uh, following Alex from yesterday, top-down approach is the, is the one that we should follow. Um, however, it's still this versus fight. And I want to uh, dig into that a little bit in order 
to uh, give you a better understanding from the HMI point of view. So again, <coughs> let's assume here is Jörg Reuter, and uh, the engineer is thinking about the substation he wants to set up. So he knows the single line diagram, he knows the protection functionalities, he imports the ICD files from his uh, devices he is willing to use, maybe in the future, or the, 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 maybe the station uh, still, still doesn't exist, maybe at, at this point of time. And then he creates an SCD file. And the SCD file should, should be the one you import for the HMI system. Because you have everything in there. The SCD file describes uh, the devices, it describes the object models, or the data model, it describes the connection IP addresses and all that stuff. And yeah, and then of course it goes further with the device uh, configuration tool. You take the SSD file, split everything up, and load the IDs with the CID files, with the configured uh, ID description. However, a little bit differently shown here, uh, an SCD file can also provide SSD information or SSD files. Perhaps they are part of the SCD, but uh, there are possibilities to gain um, information out of the SSD file and to create the single line diagrams um, automatically. And uh, this is how it can look like in a configuration uh, tool. So um, yeah, you have your, your uh, tree view about all the connections and your report control box and data sets and um, you just drag and drop them over here, and uh, yeah, it should be SCD, for SCD here as an ending. Uh, however, we learned that uh, yeah, in, in real life uh, we still need to import ICD files, uh, and yeah, and in this case you have to manually uh, type in your IP addresses, for instance. What is also maybe important or interesting here. Um, hosts, why, why are there hosts mentioned? Um, you know, a report or 61850 client server is doing point-to-point -point, uh, data exchange and the re one report uh, can only be used for one client. So if you have a redundant system uh, with a, a server and a, stand a hot standby server, you have two different 6150 clients in, in terms of 6150 report configuration. That means you need to, uh, to um, attach or, or link the uh, an, an own report uh, to the main server or the, 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 yeah, the main server and another report control board to the, um, uh, to the standby server. <coughs> uh, yeah, and here you can then import the so-called variables. Um, in, in terms of 6150, uh, they are attributes. When we build up from the bottom to the top, which is still sometimes the case, very frankly, only with smaller projects. We already face projects where the engineer has to deal with 75,000 attributes. He will be screwed with this approach, so he needs them a top-down approach. But for smaller projects, uh, this is still the case that um, engineers do that. So in this case, we can import into the uh, into the uh, HMI system either a CID file or directly the ICD file, or we import via a service directly from the running pre or ready configured ID. So do an online import, easily told. And uh, if you do so, then it looks like this. So uh, this is the configurations uh, from our uh, configuration path in our product until you get your variable list, your attribute list, and if you uh, handle the reports or uh, dynamic data sets, again, uh, a lot of dialogues you have to click through. Okay. This is about engineering. And now, just a few words about control because this is something, as I said, I would say a little bit of uniqueness only dedicated uh, to the client, more or less. 
of course, the server is executing it. When we talk about control or command control in 61 and 50, uh, we very early understand that, they are, that there are different control models. And um, there is, of course, control model zero, which means uncontrollable. But then there is one, two, three, four. And they have very similar things in, in their meaning. So direct control is here, direct control is here. Then we have normal security, normal security. Select before operate, select before operate. So what does this all mean? However, if you come, if you're new to 61 and 50 and you come from TMP3 or uh, 6870, you already almost know what it is. But anyhow, direct control, what does it mean? And there is select before operate, as I said. And the cool thing, by the way, first, is that the selected control model of the server can be read. So as a 61 and 50 client who wants to control the server, you just need to read this number to understand how the server wants to be controlled. OK. Direct operate, I think this is quite clear. Uh, we, we have this circuit breaker selected. Uh, this screen opens. We want uh, to open a circuit breaker, which is not uh, mentioned here. We directly send the open command to uh, the 6150 server. Select before operate in control model two and four. Again, the selected switch gear. We, we tell the server we want to uh, open this one. It sends a select uh, information or, or a command. Then I get I am selected back into the HMI. And with that, the confirm button appears. And with clicking on the confirm button, uh, the, the operate command uh, or the operate telegram is, is sent uh, to the server. Um, yes. And what is it about this? Normal security and enhanced <laughs> security. So normal security means that I just speak with the server. The enhanced security means that I speak first with the server. I get the confirmation. And when the server finds out, OK, the real switch gear has changed its position, I get the termination. So this is the difference between normal security and enhanced security. And now, some solution examples. This one is an architecture for a high voltage substation, a transmission substation, where we have the switch gear here. We have, uh, I don't know if this is the process bus really, but it's a, it's a, a redundant bus. And the HMI servers here are running virtualized in this case. And there are two different VMs, which um, one is uh, taking care about HMI and gateway functionalities, and the other one with automation logic. Um, because uh, the gentleman who designed this one, he sees more and more automation in centralized into the station computer. Um, and uh, so, so he decided to have this architecture like two different VMs, one with the HMI uh, and one with the automation logic. And of course, as we are in the transmission area, redundant. And then he puts everything on a web server, and the operation is then done via the web client directly in, in the facility, in this case, or in the corporate network. Okay, this is one, and this is how the HMI looks like. It looks like the old HMI of this particular customer. So we had we made this uh, you know uh, kind of test for him or proof of concept, and he wanted to have exactly the same style. Um, so this is always you know this uh, this thing on the on the one hand we have a really modern structure. You have a you know, everything, uh, the, the, the latest technology, but from where, where you can have real beauty, the, the, the optical beauty, they, they still want to remain on, on these uh, kind of very simple uh, single line diagrams 
with uh, their symbolics, uh, symbolics which they are used uh, to, to have. Five minutes. Um, this one is actually untypical for 61 and 50. It's a thermal power plant. However, a thermal power plant has also a substation. And what we see here is the substation of it, of block 10. Oh, sorry, sorry. Block uh, 10 and 9 of, of this particular substation. And um, yeah, you see quite a lot of switch here involved here, and the entire substation 61 and 50. And as I said before, um, it's very untypical to use hooks in a substation HMI. However, um, there are some cases where it's important that also the HMI has the possibility to speak goose. In this case, to supervise the goose traffic, to understand if there is this unlikely event, which we heard yesterday, that a goose is lost. Because typically, they are not lost. But you want to be sure. It's a new technology, and you want to have an additional safety um, installation which uh, gives you uh, the trust into that technology. So you can do goose supervision with a system like this. So assume we have here different bay controllers. They are speaking goose with each other. And on the HMI server, you enable a piece of software which is a goose subscriber. And with a little bit of logic behind, you can, for instance, check if there are gaps in the sequence numbers of the gooses which are uh, broadcast is over here, or if there are some gooses delayed compared to the time it may take, uh, depending uh, on the settings in the, in the specification files. And uh, then there is another thing. Um, the substitute goose publisher application. So we assume that we have is Bay controllers. Bay 4 has uh, this setting. We have we see this on the HMI client. Bay controller number four completely quits its job. Uh, the next thing is that the gooses from this Bay controller are not for not published anymore, and in the HMI we would see invalid. So the next step would be that the operator puts all these into the right position, so substitutes uh, the information. And um, by doing so, we inform the Goose Publisher, which is connected to the HMI server here, which status this switch will have and let this central publisher publish to the other Bay controllers um, to understand what this actually has, which status uh, this, this part actually has, this bay actually has. I think this was it. The gooses are <laughs> the geese. They just, they just <laughs> start telling me, they just tell me more about, about goose. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.